guys, in the fast lane here. In this video, I'm going to be installing this capacitor for an amplifier. This one is rated up to 1200 watt amplifiers. Now I'm going to go over what would be the reasons you would need a capacitor and what would be the reasons you need a capacitor and a second battery. Now if you're looking to purchase the items in this video, just go in the video, click shop this video. If you're on a mobile device, you're going to have to go underneath the video, click about me section and the links in there. If you're on my website, right underneath the video, you can click shop this video. Now before we start this project, make sure your battery cables are disconnected. Now you're always going to really need a capacitor. It's going to equalize the flow, so you're always going to be getting like a true 13.4 volt, or it's always going to stay above 12 volts. It keeps it more stable, it holds an extra charge in there, so if it starts to go low on the battery, it's always going to keep the amp at that voltage. Now, you can get into a certain setup where you got multiple amps or a very high powered amp that's pushing a lot, and it the capacitor can't even keep up with it because the battery is just not feeding it enough so that's where you would probably need more than likely a second battery in your trunk with a capacitor I've seen people even run multiple capacitors so having said that if your situation is like mine where you turn the volume up and the bass is good at say 25 volume and then you hit 28, 29 and it hits and then the bass goes out more than likely it's just dropping voltage for a split second and then it kicks back on that's what mine does so in that case uh, I think I have like a thousand watt uh, amp right now with two Sony explode 1300 watt 12s so in this case I'm gonna try out this capacitor and it shouldn't kick out anymore we'll see how this works now the first step before we go hooking all the battery up to this capacitor is we need to charge it with a diode now they supply it in this package right here you can see right there this is the diode and what needs to happen is is basically we hook up the ground first to the vehicle and then you have the other ground obviously run into your amp you have the positive run into your amp but the main one that comes off the battery terminal you don't hook that up just yet we have to get some power to this capacitor and in order to do that we take out the diode and pull this out real quick and let's say that this is the wire imaginary wire 12 volt running from the battery so we touch it to here just hand tighten it and then we loop it on the wire or twist it or however what you got and then you just watch the voltage it'll start flashing when it hits 9 volts then it'll get to about 12 or 13.4 and then all we do is pull the diode off and connect the positive wire and then the capacitor is charged now let's say you want to remove this capacitor completely get rid of it out of the system now we need to do this safely because it's charged and these things can kill you so what you have to do is you have to take the positive terminals off the battery and amp negative terminals off the battery and amp and take this resistor that they supply you with and just touch both together like this and it will zero it completely out so just take it just like this, touch it over the positive and negative terminals, hold it there until it completely goes dim. And then you can safely remove the capacitor. Now keep in mind, the resistor is going to get a little bit warm. It's just what happens when voltage flows through something, it creates friction, and that's how things get hot. So when you're doing this to deplete or extract the voltage out of it, drain it out, it's going to get a little warm. When you're charging it, it's going to get a little warm. So that's totally normal if you start to freak out that it's getting a little warm. Now I'm pretty much just going to handcraft some wires with these fish eyes. I'm going to spread them open. I took the protective plastic off and just shot over there. And I'm going to widen them up and then I'm going to solder them. So basically I just got some gauge wire over here. Yeah, I don't know, 8 gauge is what I'm running. Grab some pliers. And I just kind of twist it up, just like this. Now you can buy all this stuff pre-made. I'm just kind of running budget stuff I have in my toolbox. I have all kinds of wire and stuff, so no point in going out and buying all this stuff that I don't need to spend more money on. So I'm just going to widen it up. Now they make ones bigger, but this will work perfectly fine. Just gonna put it in there like that, come around the front, 
give it a little crimp and then I'll run like a little bead of solder right on the inside then it'll be good to go so we got my nice clamp um, on the other side since I haven't clamped the other side I'm just gonna run some shrink wrap I'm gonna cut a little piece off run it down once I solder it together and then it'll be a nice uh, positive terminal and I'll cut this in half and make a negative also Lost it's time. Racing all these broken dreams tonight And we'll fly And we'll fly Away, away, away Yeah, we'll fly Oh, we'll fly Here's the final product just got to make sure your wires are far enough back so the bolt can flatten out to the connector and that's pretty much it now what we're gonna do is the two wires on the capacitor I'm gonna put the positive which is this one right here and if you don't know it has a little red and a plus sign so we're gonna put the positive in the positive terminal on the amplifier and then we're gonna screw that down now keep note the battery's not hooked up just yet so that's good and tight. We got the negative. I'm gonna put the negative in the negative. Just kinda twist them up. Make sure we're backed out. There we go. There, that's that. Now for the actual battery. These are my battery terminals right here. And we have the negative which I'm gonna go ahead and put on the negative right here. And we wanna get the negative tight, but we don't wanna hook up the positive just yet because we gotta use that resistor that I showed you earlier. So let's get the negative over here. We can have the negative on the amp also. That's no big deal. So we'll have the amp and that coming through like this. There we go, we'll tighten this up just in a little bit. And then the positive, the positive is going to be touching the diode just for a little bit while it's hooked up on the vehicle. So we gotta go back out there, hook up the positive and negative. Now that the positive and negative terminals are hooked up to the battery, I suggest just grabbing a pair of pliers and holding it in the middle right here without squeezing too hard because it can get it can get quite warm so we're gonna touch it to the battery and now we're gonna sit here and hold it until it starts flashing there we go nine volts I don't know if you can see this zero So now we're good. You can see it's flashing zero. And now we're going to go ahead and hook up the positive terminal. So that's what you're looking for. Basically, we activated it. So we'll hook up the amp and the power. It's okay to touch the positive right now because there's no ground to it. Basically, we just activate it. Now when you hook it up, you're going to see 
that right there, which we got 12.8. That means we got some good battery to it. So that's what you guys are looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this thing and then I'll show you guys. So once you turn the vehicle off, just wait a few, I'd say about 60 seconds and this LCD should go to sleep, meaning it's not gonna be pulling any more current. So just wait a little bit. I don't know how long it took the last time, but it should go to sleep in 60 seconds or so. There we go. So now it goes to sleep. When you put the key back in, turn the ignition on, it's gonna pick up the amp starting to pull current from it and it'll activate it. As for these mounting brackets, this is a Honda Civic and it has a metal backboard. You can screw it right into it. So you just take your big ones, put them underneath like that. Same thing with the other one. You can pretty much put it anywhere you want. I mean, there's really no personal area that you can't put it in. Now, all I would suggest is just be careful if you got wires running under the carpet Make sure you don't screw into them. Like right here, I got a wire coming through here. So I gotta be careful not to screw into my wire that I put in here. So we got it all hooked up. Let's give her a go. Before it would cut out, I got the base. Uh, let's see what I got the base at real quick. Okay, so I got the base. The base is negative 6 dBi. We'll go negative 4. Trebles all the way up. And I got the fader front too. So I got it a little bit away from the back. So pretty much I got no the car's not running right now so the RPMs are down so nothing's going on right now but I just got it hooked up to a charger so when I run it I'm in the process of finishing up the build so I'll show you guys real quick but I can't run it right now because I got to get uh, intercooler piping and everything situated got to get the down pipe ran so pretty much uh, it's almost done this build but as far as the capacitor goes, that's how you do it, guys. 